You are on the platform, and as we mentioned, and I guess for me, it just feels big, it feels significant. Mask gone, mandate's gone. Um, The foot is coming off your throat in terms of COVID uh, restrictions after really two years and seven months of living in a slightly different world. Um, Of course, we're still going to be careful of the immunocompromised and the elderly and those um, who are at most risk of getting really seriously sick from COVID or catching COVID. But I think for many of us, this comes as a blessed relief. And no more so, I think, than those who run shops and public places or businesses where you have to walk in and put a mask on. You had to put a mask on. It was the most visible and in some ways, I'll be honest personally, the most annoying part, daily part of the COVID restrictions. So how do the people who work in retail feel about it? Well, uh, for reaction to yesterday's announcements, uh, we are joined by Retail New Zealand Chief Executive Officer, uh, Greg uh, Harford. Greg, lovely to have you uh, back on the platform. This has got to be good news for you guys. Oh, absolutely, Sean. It is really good news that the government has moved to remove the requirement to wear masks in retail stores. Um, you know, we've been calling for this for, for some time. Um, there's uh, significantly low compliance or has been very low compliance out there around the country. Um, quite high levels of aggro from customers associated with the masking requirement. And ultimately, it's been making everyone feel um, pretty miserable and pretty fearful about going to the shops. Yeah, it has. And that aggro thing, I saw, gosh, if I saw it once, I saw it, you know, dozens of times, uh, people without masks getting aggro with the person behind the counter who's just doing their jobs, people getting aggro with each other in a shop. In many ways, you know, retail businesses ended up being at the front line of, if you like, um, social discord over COVID, didn't they? Oh, very much so. And it's not just masks that have been the issue. Um, you know, we've had incidents being reported through of customers or members of the public getting really pretty angry and pretty nasty about all sorts of things, some of which are COVID-related, um, you know, queues and store distancing requirements, um, supply chain challenges. Um, but some of them are just because, we, you know, it's a kind of a switch has been flicked with people. And um, there's a lot of people who, who have been pretty unhappy about the world over the last couple of years, and they've been taking their frustration out on um, other people, you know, customers who, who don't like what other customers got in their shopping trolleys, for example, um, all sorts of things. So I'm really encouraging everyone as we head back into stores. It's good to know it's safe to be back in store, um, but also please shop nice when you're out and about. Um, respect the shopkeepers, respect the retail workers, respect other customers, and just just be nice. Well, Christmas is on the way, you know. If we're, spring has sprung. Uh, does this mean everything is rosy in the retail sector? What do you guys need to do or need to get back to to the way things were before COVID, I guess, or, or better? Yeah, it's still it's still pretty challenging out there. I, I think there's probably two, huge, three huge issues. Um, the first is crime, so we need to see an end to the the cycle of uh, ram raids, um, other theft from stores. Um, we really need to see the economy pick up because that is um, something that is keeping customers away from from the shops. Um, and most importantly, we need people. There just are not enough people to work in retail. We think there are probably seven to ten thousand retail roles vacant at the moment, and we. Just just can't get anyone to to work. Um, Partly that's because people don't understand that retail is a sector that offers some fantastic career opportunities, Um, but partly it's because the the break, handbrake is still firmly on immigration and we really need to, um, you know, have a bit more of a grown-up conversation and, and allow a few more people into the country. Um, hindsight is always 2020, but looking back, did we have too many restrictions for too long? Uh, look, uh, as you say, hindsight is a fabulous thing, but I think we, we have seen um, restrictions put in place very quickly without sort of rigorous cost-benefit analysis, and, and it's taken a very long time for some of those restrictions to come off. Um, the masks, I think, are, are a classic. I mean, they haven't been a part of the Australian environment and retail for six or seven months, yet we've continued to pretend here that they're, they're really important, even though you've been able to go to the pub and not wear a mask, uh, and even though case numbers in New Zealand in Australia have on a state-by-state basis been pretty consistent. So um, it's hard to see how those restrictions have necessarily made a massive difference in, in, in the relatively recent past. The restrictions that have come off also include inbound, uh, which will affect tourism, and hopefully we're not 
too far behind the competition in terms of getting inbound tourism back up, that's going to have a positive effect on retail businesses, or some of them too, isn't it? Yeah, ab- absolutely. We, we're really keen to see tourists coming back to New Zealand, and I think it's really important that we are uh, we are open, we're welcoming to to um, people who are, who are coming in. Um, part of the challenge, I think, is that we don't necessarily have the same level of flight connectivity still, so um, it'll be really good to see uh, airlines put flights back onto New Zealand over time, and hopefully that will um, really drive a bit more traffic down to this part of the world. All right, how do you feel personally about, about today? Uh, as I said, I feel, and perhaps not for any technical reason, that it's a big step for some reason. It is, it is I'm living in a uh, post-COVID world almost. Yeah, I think that's right. It's a really clear sign that actually COVID is is almost over. We are through um, the worst of it and we can now move on and return to some some sense of normality. So I think it's a real relief for, for many people um, and, and it is good news. Um, we can we can get back um, to, to living a life um, much more free of restrictions and uh, without some of the, the aggro and angst that we've seen over the last couple of years. Just one other thing, as you people uh, and as retailers try and get back on their feet and get to full productivity you got to give everyone give everyone a day off monday after next uh, where does the association stand on the day off for the late lizzie yeah well Look, look, I think, I mean, it, it would be it would be pretty um, pretty churlish to say that that uh, we're not we shouldn't be marking um, the Queen's incredible reign. The the problem comes um, actually not so much with the holiday, but but the costs imposed by it. Because if you are a, a business owner, you're reliant on dollars coming in the door to pay your staff. Um, if you have your doors open, um, you will be paying them quite a lot more to to work on that day. If you have your doors closed, um, you won't have the revenue coming in, and actually. We did a quick poll of our members uh, last night on this, and they're they're pretty split actually. Um, you know, about half of those who've made a decision are saying that they're um, probably not going to open their doors at all, which I think reflects um, just how fragile things are, and the fact that um, there isn't necessarily a lot of uh, revenue or cash floating about to pay extra costs associated with opening on a public holiday. So, despite uh, what I'm hearing is, in general terms, despite your respect uh, for the late uh, Queen. You'd rather not have the holiday. Oh, that's that's right. I mean, I think um, 72% or so of our members are saying that that there shouldn't be a public holiday for um, for the the Queen's passing. Um, And as I say, it's mostly about the the costs. And, you know, if the government's going to mandate that public holiday, then then really I'm wondering if if they need to offset those costs somehow, perhaps a tax credit, a one-off tax credit for businesses or, uh, you know, giving businesses a choice irrespective of their lease commitments would help as well. Hey, thank you so much uh, for your time, Greg. Good luck to you and the people in uh, your sector. Uh, Greg Harford there, the Chief Executive Officer of Retail New Zealand. They're not keen on the holiday either. And i got to say, uh, I think it's increasingly one-way traffic on this. Um, morning, Sean. Uh, oh, this is on Mars. I respect the at-risk in our community, but it's time they take responsibility into their own hands and let the vast majority live their lives. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, look, all this green hand-wringing over the immunocompromised. Get off the grass, Greens. It's a democracy. Majority rules. You know what that's like? The tyranny of the white middle-class man. That's what I'm about.